So sort of four areas that I've seen. There's the open the browser, uh, point it at chat GPT and use it to, to create texts and images, um, you know, and, and idea generation. It's, it's um, okay for creating the first draft of something, but, you know, frequently makes some mistakes and will hallucinate. Um, actually, Jean Valan used that word. And I think it's a very good word that it will, you know, it will get, it will start making stuff up and you've got to be really very careful of that. Second category, I think slightly more useful is, is editing and summarization. So if you've got a large chunk of text and you think about, you know, research papers, if you think about you've written a 5,000 word white paper, maybe you can use um, editing and summarization tools then to, to cut that down to size, to make a 400 word version, to make a PowerPoint, to make a short, report or transcript you know you could use it as the basis of a press release then you could use things like chatbots create that into a database itself which then can be interrogated using a chatbot you know that's kind of novel and, and interesting there because the original data set is your own data set it's a piece of content that you've created you know it's not going to make mistakes and the other categories that we're only really beginning to explore are, you know the use for evaluation there's a lot of interest in the measurement and evaluation community of, of using um, chat B GPT to query um, earned content, well, any form of content and, you know, um, ask questions of it. Uh, and then finally, planning and decision making. So you've got a data set you use, um, you use not specifically chat GPT, but other artificial intelligence tools to spot trends and patterns in that data set that then can help you with planning decision making. And ultimately, I think, you know, that's potentially the really interesting area because you've got the opportunity then to, you know, to actually create new knowledge.